Hey guys, what's going on? Wanted to uh, get some video out here. It's been a while, so thank you for uh, tuning in and watching this. Wanted to go over some uh, back and lower body training. Uh, training has been going very well. Uh, I've been experimenting with some different exercises and I wanted to show you those and just kind of talk through what I think has been contributing to that and uh, you know what I'm going to continue to do as, as I move things forward. So, um, you know, I, I, I feel good right now and I think whenever that's the case, you always want to ask yourself why. Um, similarly, if you're not feeling good, you know, why am I not feeling good? And, and sometimes you don't know uh, and sometimes you do, but there's been a few things that I contribute uh, me feeling good on this uh, this training uh, block. Um, one is better nutrition. Um, you know, it's might be a question. Well, gosh, Ryan, I mean, don't you keep your nutrition better all the time? Yeah, I mean, we can always improve. Uh, but one thing I've been doing that's improved a lot is uh, I've I've moved my workout back my workout time uh, back a bit. So I'm actually giving myself time to eat a good solid meal and allow that to digest. Um, I train in the morning and before, it, you know, it's, it, I certainly have a pre-trained meal, but now I can have a more substantial training meal. And I think that's really helped giving me energy while I train. So uh, real quick, this is a, uh, a mile rep set that I've been doing with uh, neutral or close grip pull-ups and, uh, you know, this has been good because a I haven't been able to do close grip pull-ups for quite some time able to include those now um, and I think it's a really good application for mile reps where you do that rest pause scenario uh, in between uh, sets so you can still get uh, more activation even though you're fatigued and you know obviously pull-ups are one of those exercises that a lot of people struggle with because they're hard um, and so allowing yourself some rest to get the reps in, I think it's a good benefit here. So, you know, obviously I'm staggering my head, so I'm bop myself in the pull-up bar, but that's, that's why it's been feeling good. So, uh, so going back to, you know, one of the uh, things I think's made an impact on my training, uh, and me feeling good is, is just my shoulder health. And, you know, going back to the, um, those neutral close grip pull-ups, um, you know, my shoulders have been feeling good. Um, and, and why do I think that? I think uh, there's a number of reasons. One is uh, I've been doing my consistent uh, band routine. Uh, I posted a video last time about that. You can go back in there and uh, see that on my YouTube channel. But doing that uh, consistently before training really helps get things loosened up. And I think also it just helps with good health for my shoulder. And so that's really helped open things up. Uh, on my training and then the other thing is I think just being smart uh, you know after been training for gosh 20 over 25 years um, you know it, you just have to know when there's some exercises that just aren't feeling good when to cut it out um, when to modify and when to just um, you know progress slowly so I think those are two big factors that have attributed to my my shoulders feeling good this so here's a here's an exercise I tried. So I obviously I train at home and I love seated calf raises, um, but it's one of those exercises that unless you have a seated calf machine, it is hard to mimic. So uh, you know I decided to do this in between a couple other movements, um, throwing my uh, power blocks on my my knees and trying to get a squeeze. And it's just you know that's an exercise where you can put a lot of weight on that. And so this is, didn't really feel like much. Um, so I'm gonna have to continue to play with this. Maybe it'd be something I could uh, superset with another calf exercise to kind of pre-exhaust. Um, so yeah, moving into uh, lower body. You know, one of the things I've been focusing on is activation. So I'm really trying to start my training session with a good activation exercise. Really get those muscles fired up. Um, you know, and it's not just about warming up, it's about getting some fatigue in there. So then that way, when I go into the larger movements, uh, the, the, the muscles that I want to train are already responding. Uh, you know, like for example, here I'm doing these uh, corner landmine squats, really focusing on 
uh, the eccentric, really focusing on lowering the weight with the muscles I want to train, um, and getting those quads fired up. You know, keeping my my form intact, and not not so much concerned about the weight. I mean, obviously, I want to progress on these and all the other uh, accessory exercises, but the main goal here is just to get those muscles activated. So um, this is a good one because it, it puts real low stress on the rest of my body. Um, but like I said, I really get those, uh, get those muscles activated. So um, going back into why this has been such a good train block. So we talked about uh, the nutrition, the pre-trained pre meal, you know, taking care of my shoulders. But I think another big part is sleep. Um, you know, I've really been focused on getting enough sleep, uh, and this is a game changer. Um, you know, I think that for me, seven and a half hours, uh, ideal scenario is I wake up right before my alarm. Uh, to me, that tells me I'm well rested and uh, I'm feeling good. And I really like to do that. It doesn't happen very often, but occasionally it does. Uh, and, and to me, that's, that's a, a great indication and a perfect balance of getting that that rest and recovery but you know obviously there's always those few days where you know i don't get the sleep i want but uh, i i track it on a daily basis and i give myself a point when i when i get that sleep and like i said for me it's a minimum of seven hours so um so here i'm doing some some squats and these are these are with my safety squat bar and again um this is after doing that that activation um, actually, here I'm doing good mornings. I haven't done these uh, for a while, um, and so I tried to do them on my safety squat bar, and it just didn't feel right. Um, you know, I don't know if it's the way that bar's sitting on my shoulders or how the weight is uh, positioned in relation to my torso. I, as you can see, I kept messing with it a little bit just to see if there's something I needed to do. Uh, it just wasn't feeling good, so I, I shelved that and I grabbed my, my straight bar and put that on and this, this felt a lot better and, and this is always what I've done with my, um, with my good mornings and so um, stuck with a straight bar. Uh, so, but you know, you gotta, you gotta try those things and experiment and like I said, this, this, uh, this train block I've been trying with some new movements, just seeing how they feel, shake it up um, and, and just, uh, you know, try some new things just to uh, keep changing things up. I mean, you've always got your core exercises that are mainstay. These are like, you know, your, your bread and butter, meat and potatoes, call it what you want, your squats, your bench, your rows, your deadlifts, things like that. And I really use those as uh, indicators of, of progress with strength. Um, but I think it's also good to, to add some variety in there to shake it up. Uh, to keep the muscles guessing, um, keep it fun, to be honest with you, you know, keep it fun. And then also, if you plateau, if I plateau in a certain movement, I just don't feel like I'm making progress, well, then I'll shelve it and then uh, I'll come back to it later and then I'll try a new accessory. So, you know, a lot of times these new exercises, uh, they, they provide some stimulation to the muscle that I think augments some new growth. Uh, you know, your body is not... Uh, but that's a good one. Here's another exercise that I've been having a lot of fun with. Uh, I've been having my clients do this as well. It's uh, hack squats. Now a lot of a lot of commercial gyms they've got an actual hack squat machine um, where you've got pads up on your shoulders. But this is actually uh, still called a hack squat uh, with a barbell. And as you can see, uh, you've got the barbell position behind you. Now, the focus on this is the quads, and, and you don't go very deep. I mean, you're certainly not in parallel, but uh, you, if, it's hard to tell in this, in this video, but I'm actually keeping my quads, my knees unlocked at the top, and so my quads are, have just continuous tension on the whole time. Uh, the, the bar's position behind your back and just lightly touches the back of your Achilles tendon. Um, and you know, I've got uh, small plates on here so you get full range of motion, but you don't, you don't need a lot of weight, at least I don't on this one. Um, you know, and hopefully this is one that I'll continue to progress on and get stronger. Uh, but I really feel like this one really targets those quads. It's really easy on the back, doesn't load the spine. Um, you know, it's almost like a reverse deadlift really instead of the bar in front of your shins, it's behind. But this one I'm gonna continue to keep in there. And I think it's a good accessory exercise. 
you know, it's not going to be a primary mover by any means, but uh, it's certainly one that, you know, you can add to uh, your arsenal of things to help really stimulate those, those quads. So really like them. Hack squats, give them a try, see what you think. Um, but it's been something that I've enjoyed. So, um, you know, and here, this is kind of a, a little uh, superset I've done. So you can see the bar is still there from the hack squats. And now I'm, I'm doing calf raises. And here's another one that, you know, I set it up on my rack and I've got my rack position high and I'm leaning into it. So I, I set the I set the uh, the, be the beams, uh, whatever you want to call them, up higher so I can slide the bar up the rack. And, and this works well for me um, to do a, a standing calf raise. And again, here I'm really getting a good stretch and just trying to uh, squeeze squeeze them out and, and get those uh, calves going. So, um, you know, as I record this, uh, it's it is summer, and uh, you know. I think summer is a time, especially here in Iowa, that we need to enjoy because, you know, we've only got about, call it five months of really awesome weather and, and uh, we're, we go outside and play. So being, being flexible uh, is, is important, you know, um, being flexible with your training time, activities. Um, and, and so, you know, what's been working well for me is I have a three day rotation. And I just, I just go through them, you know, and right now I'm setting it up for, um, you know, chest, shoulders and triceps and back and biceps and then lower body. And I just go through that rotation, you know, and so if I'm feeling good, I train, um, you know, and, and I'll just simultaneously go through that. Uh, if there's a day that I need off for an activity or just need an extra day of recovery, that's okay too. And I think it's important to keep that flexibility, um, especially with the activities in the summer, uh, to uh, you know to help it not only be fun but also those around you, um, you know, you can still participate and uh, and do things. So uh, here's a little exercise I tried: uh, cable cable cr uh, crunches. Um, did a little side to side. Um, you know, I think this is uh, one that I might continue to do. And this is another ab exercise that I've really enjoyed. So if you look at it, um, this is on leg day, and I keep the low, uh, the leg extension apparatus on there, and I keep the, the weight on there, and what this does is it keeps the tension on the quads. And so it's a nice finisher because you're obviously working your abs, and I'm focusing on keeping things tight and uh, you know, working that torso. Um, bracing, but it also gets the lactic acid, it gets that burn going in the quad. So that's a nice, nice little finisher that <clears throat> I found. And uh, you know, when you're doing the decline, just pushing again, even if you don't have the ability to set it up on a leg extension like that, uh, even like a decline bench, you know, when you're doing your decline sit ups, just pushing against that pad with your shins really helps activate those quads and, and get things moving. So Moving on to um, upper body here. So this is a <clears throat> this is incline dumbbell press and just a quick shot of these. This is something that I haven't been able to do for years. And again, going back to shoulder health, uh, I'm able to do this again, and I'm really excited to incorporate some more incline work into my training. Uh, and I'm excited to progress on that. I think it'll really add an element. Um, again, flat flies. I think this is another one that continues to be a mainstay um, and, and using these two movements. So, I, you know, the upper body has been something that's been lacking in the last couple of years, two, three years, as far as just being able to train like I want to because I'm just having to be careful with the shoulder. And I'm obviously still careful, but now I've got expanded things that I can do and, and certainly uh, looking forward to, to taking advantage of that. So going into my, my training right now, um, the goal is lean gains. Um, you know, I'm focusing on adding mass, adding size, you know, preparing myself to go into a contest prep. Um, but I'm trying to focus on feeling the muscles grow, you know, good nutrition, good sleep, like I said before, um, and, and really setting myself up for, for some success, success here with the uh, next contest prep. Uh, this is a supine press. Uh, I like how this feels on the shoulder. It really 
keeps that AC joint open and uh, you know anybody who's having shoulder impingement issues this is one that I was able to incorporate and still be able to uh, you know to work on without aggravating that shoulder and then you know going right into a lateral race here and you know really trying to focus on keeping the tension on the shoulders at the in the bottom of the position so never relaxing fully just constantly trying to keep that medial head of the deltoid activated so it's a nice it's a nice one two combo um, you know when I'm doing these uh, supine presses as I call them I'm not using a lot of weight which is obviously the case because then I can move right into laterals um, but again this is a, a great example of just being smart with the shoulder uh, this is something that I, I'm able to, to do and to push um, but it's not act, it's not actually causing any inflammation on that shoulder joint um, and I think it's been one of those keys that's really helped push me over the hump to get my shoulders back to where I need them. So, uh, but yeah, my right now, like I said, right now I'm focused on uh, lean, lean mass gains, um, continuing to increase the macros as I can. You know, uh, taking monthly measurements, making sure things are on track. Uh, so it's been going great. You know, right now I'm, I'm I've been making some good progress. I'm feeling some growth uh, in in all aspects. You know, continuing to focus on symmetry to, to stay balanced and and I'm excited for where the train goes you know continue to watch that uh, you know as I get my numbers up you know maybe this uh, fall we'll see us switching into more of a contest prep uh, more of a cut mode but right now body fat staying pretty stable and I'm going to keep pushing forward you know I'm trying to put some size on and okay with that little bit of body fat gain it's necessary and needed in order to maintain that surplus and and make progress just not going over the top, you know. I'm not. I'm not wanting to get sloppy. You know, if I need a, a 200 calorie uh, surplus, not a, a 2,000 calorie surplus. So, uh, you know, again, just to keep that positive, um, you know, growth going. So, this is another exercise that's felt really good. Close grip bench press. Uh, I use the shoulder saver here. Again, another example of helping keep my my shoulders happy, but. This is really a good one to help uh, hit the, the triceps. Again, like with the other exercises, really focus on the eccentric or the, low in the lowering the weight and really just feeling those triceps do the work. So, um, and then this is another exercise that I, I've been doing. This is a, a good finisher. It's a tricep push outs and really get a good stretch here. So if you see when I'm bringing back those elbows, I start raising them up just a little bit and the goal here is to get a good stretch. And I try to do that my last exercise um, when I'm training body part. You know, maybe that's like a, a leg extension or something that I'm really getting a full stretch on the muscle. Or maybe it's flies or, or deep push-ups or whatever the case. But really trying to finish with a, a good stretching exercise just to make sure that I'm, I'm getting uh, full stimulation and uh, cooking up that, that, that muscle group, whatever it is. So... So I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, thank you for that. Um, you know, please let me know uh, if you have any questions on any future videos, content, things like that. But uh, we'll continue to put out uh, those as they come. And um, I'm going to go ahead and finish up. This is a, a long video where have, I've been trying to get this out for a while. So I've got some new movements I'm going to be showing in the upcoming uh, videos with some new train techniques and whatnot. So hope everybody's having a great summer. If it's summer when you're listening to this, uh, keep training going well and keep making every day count. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching and see you soon.